Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. If you're looking for new restaurants to try this month, our friends from Sauce Magazine have it for you with this month's hit list. Joining me to talk about the new openings in the region are Catherine Claney, Sauce Magazine Managing Editor, and staff writer Matt Sorrell. They also have some big news for local chefs honored by the James Beard Foundation. We'll have more on that a little bit later, but first we'll go to the list. And I have to preface it by saying this, Matt, because you're going to take our first one here. I used to live in Webster Groves and haven't been back much since, but I was there the other day and was just amazed at how the the Lockwood area has has grown and so many different uh, so many different uh, restaurants and places that were, weren't there just a year or two ago. No, and you absolutely. have one of them. Yeah, I sure I sure do. Um, yeah, that whole area. I mean in the last year has just, or maybe, well, two or three years, I should say, has really exploded. And I'm from Kirkwood and it's, I'm in there all the time. And and just, I see that change, you know, a lot. It was very dramatic. I thought, anyway, enough of about me. Let's (laughs) let's talk about your place, the Balkan Treat Box. So uh, Balkan Treat Box recently opened uh, in Webster. And um, so that uh, it's a, the brick and mortar version of the food truck Balkan Treat Box, which uh, debuted about a year and change ago. Uh, and so Lauren and Ito uh, Nalik uh, are the owners, and they s- prepare food that's specifically from the Balkan uh, Peninsula uh, and all those countries there. And so um, it, the, the, I guess the cornerstone of their, of their restaurant is this large wood-fired oven where they make everything. Um, everything is served on this kind of like a pita bread called a so- somun. I'm going to mispronounce this. I'm not... <laughs> Not very good at it, but uh, and then their dishes are you know have a lot of cheeses and meats and just it's just really good Balkan comfort food really. Mm. Having been to that part of the world, that f- that food is pretty good. Oh, it's hearty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Catherine, welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so one of the places that we uh, put on hit list this month was called Pop. So this is another restaurant from Dave Bailey, who seems to be opening a new place every every year in St. Louis. Um, this one actually took the place of Lacadian, which was his former restaurant in uh, Lafayette Square. He uh, Pop is a sparkling wine bar with mostly shareable food and a really impressive wine list. Um, the by the glass list I really liked because it was a nice range of regions, but also price points. You could get a really affordable affordable $8 glass of an Italian sparkling wine, and it goes up to like a $19 glass from Napa Valley. Um, The list isn't limited to just wine. You can also try sparkling sake, uh, sparkling cider, um, wine-like sour beers, um, and they also have cocktails that all have a little bit of sparkling used as one of the components. Um, You can do a classic airmail. There was also one I really liked called the Kvass Will You Drink? Uh, which was a it tasted weirdly root beer like, and I'm still not 100 sure wh- percent sure why, but I think it has something to do with they use kvass soda, which is a Russian soda that's made with like a dark rye bread, so it has a, a very very earthy quality to it. Um, bottles are available as well, um, and this is where the list really shines. There's more than 20 French champagnes. They also have uh, South American sparkling wine, Italian, Spanish, so it's a really cool way to try a lot of different varieties of bubbles um, for not just celebration but anytime. And it's right around the corner from your office, which Absolutely. Makes, it, makes it handy. <laughs> the Le KDN, um, I read an interview with Dave in which he said he, he always wanted to do this this kind of a place that like pop, the Lacadian mm-hmm. was just kind of standing in place and mm-hmm. to do that. Which I think is fun because it is uh, Bailey's Chocolate Bar, which was his first restaurant, yeah. is upstairs. It's on the yeah. second floor of this building. So you can go down and get a glass of bubbly and then keep the night going and go upstairs and get some dessert later. Right. Well, you've got another place, Catherine, uh, with a very apt title. Bait. From- Yes. <laughs> so uh, this is a new seafood spot in the central West End right here on Lindell. Uh, Chef Sierra Jackson has a menu that really showcases shellfish, fresh fish, and a surprising number of vegan-friendly options as well, which I didn't realize until I got there, but it was a really cool um variety of dishes. Shareable starters are half the menu, so it's a good way to try a lot of different things with your guests. Um, and this is I was really impressed with what she can do with seafood. Lobster fries are a really affordable way to try some what she can mm. do with lobster. Um, think of a poutine. So normally it's sort of like cheese and gravy covered fries with some um, sometimes with meat. What she does is fries with pieces of buttered poached lobster. 
um, an aioli, and then a really vibrant herb sauce. It's really decadent, but it's really good. Um, I for, was just going to use that word. Oh, it's decadent so, it's is so exactly decadent. the word. <laughs> um, and then the other one, this is a real showstopper. You order the Wicked Flaming Prawns, and what you get are these monster prawns that she splits and then grills. And they're served tableside flambéed. So they come literally on fire at yeah. your table with a sherry sauce. Once the sauce, you know, the flame goes out pretty quickly. The meat was delicious. And that sauce, whatever you have available to dip, even if that's your fingers, that's what you got to do. That sauce is fantastic. Um, there are bigger entrees. They're a higher price point, but they're very generous portions. Mm-hmm. And it is very fresh seafood. Um, the Thai uh, red curry seared halibut was really, really nice. Um Perfectly prepared halibut, seared crisp on the bottom, and then the moment I poked it with my fork, it started falling apart, which is mm. exactly what you want with a cut like that. Um, and then the another one that's a really big showstopper is the seafood boil. It comes with two massive snow cl- crab clusters, big fat, some of the biggest Gulf shrimp I've seen. Um, turkey and dewy, as well as corn and potatoes. You can get it tossed in a variety of sauces. I like the bait sauce. It's very garlicky, very buttery, a little spicy. You got a little Cajun kick to it. Um, and that's easily shared between two people. It is messy, um, but it is worth it. I don't recommend it for a first date, but if you don't right. mind getting getting your hands messy, it's definitely a, a great one to try. I can tell just by looking at you, you, you love <laughs> this place. Good. It was fun. <laughs> it was good. All right, we're going to go from uh, uh, the place you just described, bait, to one uh, that's a little more in my price range. It's a diner. (laughs) Yeah, well, so Morning Glory Diner recently opened up on Cherokee Street uh, in the former home of Vista Ramen. And uh, so it's from Ari Ellis. Ari is the chef owner. She used to own The Cut, which was like sort of like the, uh, the food window inside Fortune Teller Bar. And so this was like sort of a dream of hers from childhood. She says, um, it's just a really straight ahead, solid, greasy spoon. Uh, so if you like places like Eat Right or, um, you know, diner food like that, this is going to be right up your alley. Um, slingers, burgers, tuna salad sandwiches. Uh, she does really great breakfast. She has fantastic biscuits and gravy that she makes uh, in-house. And um, really just, you know, the, what I like about it is it's not pretentious. It's, you know, the decor is minimal. You've got a great jute box in there. Um, there are no riffs or takes or anything on classics is just if you want a burger they're not going to do a deconstructed you know burger it's just a good old you know griddle smash burger sounds good it's fantastic sounds right i'm from new jersey that's where the diner supposedly was invented right Mm -hmm. right yeah and they actually the the whole concept started out as they would take old railroad cars and convert them and you know i don't think there's many of those left anymore but i think jersey still has a few good old new jersey (laughs) all right this is really an eclectic list absolutely uh, yes so we're going from classic diner fair to the curry club uh which is out in chesterfield admittedly i have not been to this one yet my co-worker mira went to uh, the curry club but she brought some food back for us to try and it was really great um it's a cafeteria style setup at lunch um she said the two curries you can get two curries with naan and rice uh starts at six dollars so very affordable lunch option she really liked the butter chicken and the dal, which is a lentil-based uh, curry. The other lunch special is dosa, which is a fermented dough, sort of a, a Italian sou- or excuse me, not Italian, an Indian sourdough sort of crepe. Um, it's made with ground rice and lentils, um, and then you can pick any different filling. She picked a cheese one. There's also a classic masala, which is stuffed with spiced potatoes, and then it's uh, folded up and then griddled on a flat top. It's a really nice sort of handheld lunch option. Um, it comes with different dipping sauces. Um, she, I think there was a really nice flavorful chutney that she liked there. Um, and then dessert was really great, too. There's something called a Mysore Pak, which is um, sort of a buttery, doughy cookie uh, with a crumbly texture. It's, it was really, really delicious. And kimchi guy. We'll do that quickly so sure. we can get to the beer. Yes, finals. Kimchi Guys, uh, the owner of Drunken Fish, Munsak So, has opened St. Louis's first dedicated Korean fried chicken spot downtown on the landing. Get exactly what uh, it bills itself as, bone-in Korean fried chicken, mm-hmm. perfectly crisp skin with a really nice uh, spicy sweet glaze on the sauce. It was really, really nice. We liked that one a lot. Well, as we say, it was and it has been an eclectic uh, list. Cool. But there are some, uh, some people in, in the restaurant world who are very, very happy today, Matt. Yes. Uh, well, last week, the... Uh, James Beard Awards uh, nominations were announced. And uh, for those who don't know, the James Beard Award is uh, sort of like we always consider it the Oscars of the uh, the culinary world. It's an extreme honor to just to be nominated. Uh, we did really well this year. There were four St. Louis area chefs who were nominated for Best Chef Midwest. So Michael Galina of Vicia, uh, Lona Luo of uh, Lona's Little Eats, who we talked to last year uh, on the show, um, Jesse Mandika of Olive and Oak, and then Ni Vong Sali of Billie Jean. 
And uh, we also had Nathaniel Reed from Nathaniel Reed Bakery, uh, nomination for Outstanding Baker. And then Planner's House uh, in Lafayette Square was on the Outstanding Bar Program list. Uh, and then I guess really the big news, too, was Nick Bogner, who we've been talking about a lot lately at Nippon Tay out in Baldwin, was uh, nominated for Rising Star Chef of the Year. So, yeah, and then uh, Bogner actually the day, the day or two after getting this nomination announced that he's going to open another restaurant. This one's going to be closer to the city. It's going to be called Indo, and it's going to be in the Botanical Heights neighborhood right there by uh, Olio and Union Loafers. So he's going to be opening a new project there. So Nick Bogner's had a great uh, yeah, couple he really of months. Has. <laughs> he's, he's definitely – he's been on our, one of our ones to watch for – on our list for a while. He does great things. When will the uh, will the awards be awarded? Do we know? So the finalists are announced at the end of this month, uh, March 27th, and we'll be posting that uh, as soon as we get that information on, online at saucemagazine.com. And then after that, the uh, once we find out if we've made the finalists round, the official awards uh, take place, I believe, uh, in early May. Right. So lots of excitement in the restaurant world uh, now. If we can only get some warm weather and get those patios going, <laughs> we'll be in, in good shape. I tell you, would, here before you know it. I would love a patio drink right now. That sounds amazing. All right. Well, folks, thanks very much, Catherine Claney and Matt Sorrell. Thank you for being with us with uh, this month's Hit List. Thank you. Thanks. Great to see you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.